March Steam Camp marketing meeting. February 19, Wednesday. Meeting with the team. We're going to New Zealand, Boston, Seattle, and Richmond. Four places. Now, product is there. We know we can do a good printer. We have perfected a plotter. We have done initial milling and drilling and started on the Pi tablet. Hi, Jeremy. Let's dive Hello. right in. How's everything going? Pretty well. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to record this. And main thing for today is, uh, yeah, like discuss marketing and venues and all of that kind of like the logistical stuff based on the fact that we've got, uh, so, so to overview on the curriculum, we're good on a printer. We know we can do the plotting attachment. Uh, there's workflows and tool chains around that that we need to kind of perfect. There's uh, the third day is uh, some of the circuit production parts. So so doing an Arduino. So let's um, let's see if we can use the actual mill and plotter and etching to do a, a realistic Arduino. So that's still a good, really good topic. And, and see that it works by powering up a, a load, a heavy load with it. Through, a, through an SSR, through a solid state relay, which we, we already have a placeholder for on a, on a control panel so we can short circuit the, the big development of, of power electronics to the simple example which still shows the power to control things and build them from scratch using the existing tool chains. And then day four, we're gonna continue on a Pi tablet, which is awesome because that's an exciting project that lends itself to simple things like we still wanna do the, the film studio and possibly start by writing a super simple app so there could we could introduce the programming in there even if it's like command line scripts and things but see see how far we get into that but that's exciting because it covers a lot of a lot of areas and i still want to use that as a, a personally as a thing that replaces my cell phone so mm -hmm. so that's pretty positive uh so let's fill in so where are you at on uh, the venue the venue process we're waiting so for I've heard back from the makerspace in Bellingham, and um, I kind of got a soft, you know, affirmation yeah. that they would host it. But I'm waiting yeah. just for a, you know, like a firm. Yeah, we can do that. You can commit us to that. Um, yeah. I'm gonna try to drop by here in an hour or two and just see if anyone's around. They they recently relocated uh, buildings, and so they're in the process of reopening at their new location, and that's kind of why I got a soft yes instead of a, yeah. I think I got yeah. A firm that's that's okay and yeah let's see if um joe justice of wikispeed comes through hey ian oh hi much let's meet each other jeremy. so we got jeremy from the seattle location ian from the new zealand five-legged dog breeding grounds in a private school <laughs> that's a maori school which is interesting and i heard from a friend of mine who's in new zealand that you guys are kind of like the maori population is more connected to the to the land, you, you kind of like, unlike the Native Americans, you would, would you compare like the Maori population as like the Native American equivalent of America? Kind of like as far as the first people that were there? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, the Maori people are the indigenous people of, of New Zealand. Yeah. Uh, um, yep. So you so guys yeah, are definitely. connected to the land more than like, is there like a big distinction between New Zealanders, the white guys and the Maoris as far as how you treat land kind of? meaning that you guys are more of the land steward mindset or yeah yeah definitely so the the maori call it kaitiaki so kaitiaki is like the guardian of the land and, no. and maori believe that they don't own the land they believe that they're the guardians of the land and that they um that no one can really own it but um we were colonized um by captain cook um in the english um in the 1800s i think and um but this, we've, we're quite fortunate compared to other indigenous um, communities in that we've got a treaty with the with the crown. Mm. So it's called the Treaty of Waitangi. And um, so a lot of the, the Maori chiefs uh, back then signed this treaty. And then so the, the Maori people still ha have that document to, to point back to, um, to sort of maintain their sovereignty and their rights. And so they sort of... Um, have it to sort of have that equal um 
hmm. uh, playing field there. So, so yeah, we're quite fortunate that we have a treaty. Other indigenous communities um, don't have that and it's sort of just been totally um, taken advantage of. Um, and so we were quite fortunate in that aspect. It's still, it's still a lot of work. There's still a lot of um, settlements happening based off of the treaty. So you'll have a lot of iwis, which are tribes in the various regions, and they're all, they're all going through their sort of Waitangi settlement. Um, so they sort of bring any sort of grievances based on the Treaty of Waitangi and sort of get um, remunerated for like land that's been taken and things like that. So yeah, it's really interesting. I'm def I'm far from an expert, but um, yeah. No, but there, there, we do we do have quite a good sense in New Zealand of um, biculturalism. So the um, the European or uh, the Pakeha or the you know the the white population, you know the they we still it's not like this um, hard out tension thing. Everyone gets along and it's bicultural and e everyone learns a bit of Maori language and hmm. um, you know well cities and streets and things like that are maori names and so we it's really cool we've got this good um sense of biculturalism in new zealand do the white guys learn maori as well a little bit yeah yeah fully yeah if they want to they um oh, wow. it is our official second uh it is a, an official language of new zealand um i don't speak it myself I, i wasn't raised to speak it but you can go to the um local universities and take a course for free hmm. um yeah no it's different in america because because apparently in america i mean those trees existed but they weren't ever respected is that uh i don't know that's, yeah it's kind of interesting yeah. history there as a historical aside but right now we can uh yeah good opportunity to work together and uh um, yeah. ian tell me about like what would you see as the ideal outcome because one of the things here we want to talk about so yeah like basically getting a word out marketing on an event and getting people attracted to it but what would you see as the ideal outcome for what could happen in the collaboration with because you're i mean you're actually a first high school that we're d directly collaborating with as oh, in cool. we do have <laughs> three workshops aligned for the summer on on june 22nd for a full nine-day event that's some high schools in america um but that's the first time we're delving into the uh, the high school population and the question is does how does the teaching which we have done which we've done for adults primarily. I mean, there were kids there too, but primarily adults. How do we shift that primarily for high school aged people? I don't see a big deal because especially if there's if there's uh, people who are from the STEM area, they might be more qualified than adults who have no background in, in science and techno technology at all. What are your mm. thoughts on that? Yeah, I think that that's um, a yeah, huge possibility. You know, uh, some of our kids are, you know, familiar working with Arduinos and things like that, where a lot of adults probably, you know, don't even know what an Arduino is. Yeah. Um, uh, for us running this camp in March, um, I think it'll just very much be the school is just the venue. I think it's it's hard to figure out, you know, um, you know, we would love to be able to register students, but it's just really uh, the price is just a little bit too expensive for any of our sort of families in our community. Um, yeah. I, I have sort of been working in the background trying to get like a uh, write emails and things to some of the bigger national organizations. We've got one like Callahan Innovation, which is like a government uh, organization that, you know, funds innovation and things like that and some Maori development agencies. Mm -hmm. I've been writing emails to them to see if I can get funding to subsidize uh, Maori and students to attend. And while they're while they sort of say there's not really any funding and they say that, um, you know, there are some other funds that could tap into the just the turnarounds too quick. Um, so something like that would be for, you know, in a future camp. Um, but yeah, I, I would love for my students to be able to attend. Um, um, I quite like the idea of the two for one that you've sort of advertised on the thing. I'm hoping that under my registration, I might uh, be able to bring in, you know, one or two students if that's okay with you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, how yeah. to push that forward in terms of the access because i mean there's definitely like the 500 bucks in materials cost right there and then yeah. the preparation time for the kid on top of that so there's real cost involved but maybe like i mean we could do it yeah. where where we invite more people like just at a low cost but i mean they wouldn't take the thing home with them you know yeah yeah should we open yeah. up some kind of uh 
I mean, first of all, do you think that will work? Because why we didn't want to do it that way is because when people are not direct stakeholders in the product they build, they're going to lose a little bit of interest. Yeah, no, I totally get it. And I totally get the price. Like for what you're getting, it's it's totally reasonable. Um, but, you know, teenage kids aren't really trying to buy 3D printers and things like that, you know? So I think maybe like just thinking out loud, I haven't really thought too much about it, but, but maybe like if you were to target a camp or if we were to target a camp towards students, um, maybe someone sponsored the, the, the printer and then like maybe like a group of five of them are like all working around it and then they, they don't necessarily get to keep it, but they just kind of, you know, maybe the school would keep it. So the school could maybe pay for it, something like that. Um, mm -hmm. You know, maybe we could go to the other high schools around the, the area and say, hey, look, um, we're running this camp. Mm -hmm. If you pay for all the equipment, the printer and everything, the school will get to keep it and you can send your students along and the students will uh, build it and get the knowledge and then sort of they'll be equipped to actually utilize that 3D printer. Because I think that's a big problem. I think a lot of schools, they, they buy all this hardware because they, they need it or they think they need it and then it's there, but then they don't even really know how to utilize it. Um, yeah. So I can I can totally see it being appealing to to schools to want to do that. Well, see if you can yeah. do that. I mean, are you in contact with? So let's talk. Let's talk a look at. Uh, let me uh, share this doc here. So just some some ideas for marketing. Let's jot it down and see if we can actually get some traction. And actually execute on some of these here. So I mean, just yeah. create this document. I, I think that I think the problem. Uh, with this is just the, the short turnaround. Yeah. Like I think with this, like I think the school thing would be really cool for like the next one. Uh, but but this one, with, with, because it's in a few weeks' time, I'm just sort of just going to put it out there to everyone and everyone, and then hopefully we you know we get a good interest because because you're becoming much, and I think that that's going to be a lot more of a draw card to those that already know you and you know OSC's work mm. rather than. You know, so I think that that's that's a really big draw card that you're coming, mm. uh, where you know the schools might not really necessarily have heard of open source ecology. Um, so I think for this one we just put it out there, yeah. Um, and then for the next one we can sort of get get a bit targeted, because mm -hmm. um, we might we might need to because we won't have uh, we won't have you as as the draw card. It would be just me. <laughs> <laughs> so come come along, but um yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I wanted to agree with Ian. I've had some contact with a couple of high schools in the area and had the same kind yep. of the same feedback that there's some interest in the school maybe sponsoring one printer for a group of, of students to work on and then keeping it. Um, mm -hmm. I've also been broadcasting, you know, find one or two friends who who are really interested in this and the three of you build it together and then you take it home. And if you want another one, like you'll have learned the skills during the class that if you really want, you know, to put a second one together, you now have everything you need. Mm. Um, yeah. Which and one? then in the mm. towards the end of the school year, um, like the, the other schools that uh, Marchin mentioned, I've had some contact with people saying, yeah, we might want to put together like a five day um, you know, the immediately following the last week of classes here in the States in June uh, to get the kids who are interested a chance, you know, gives us a chance to plan and get gives them a chance to plan on it as well. Yeah, I've discovered some some resistance with the very short turnaround here. Oh, yeah, as well, especially with, with my location getting added kind of very uh, last minute. So yeah, yeah. Um, Ian, what about could we do you think we should maybe like put another option on your for the New Zealand event where we're advertising like maybe like a half price thing, but they don't take the, they'll take the printer home, but not the pie. Cause the pie adds like double the material costs on it. What if we did one that's where we take, I mean, the printer itself is a big deal already. So maybe advertise mm. that. And then you get all the skills of using it after that and tag on to the other pie, t pie team after, which is only the fourth day. So, mm. Should we? Um... I think, yeah, I, I kind of like that idea. Um, I think because yeah, you're right. The three D printer is huge in its in itself. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm just thinking when. Like, I'm quite interested. I haven't really been advertising yet. I've been holding off, waiting for the like the, the organisations to come back to me on whether they could fund it. Uh, but basically, the the word that I'm getting back is that they can't because it's, you know, too short too notice short. and then 
and need a right. proposal, blah, blah, blah. So I, so I think, you know, I was just talking to them yesterday. So I think starting today, I'm just going to go and yeah. put it out there for everyone. And if, if it feels like that, we're not really getting much people registering, then maybe we consider something like that. Um, I have just managed to um, lock in some accommodation and um, food options. So we've got a local university just around the corner and they're more than happy to offer the hostel plus three meals a day option if they want it. Um, I can sort of see the meals being a bit of a problem just because they're not on site. They'd have to go be traveling back and forth, which might be a bit of a hassle, but at least we can now advertise as, as part of the package um, accommodation. Are you saying that's think would been be donated or, or no? Oh, uh, no, it would be paid, uh, but I think it's quite reasonable. I'm just trying to find the listing. Yeah, well, that has to go in the budget somewhere, which we haven't accounted for, so... Um, yeah, but could we add that as a additional package option that they yeah. can choose? Yeah, if, yeah. If you could get, give me some numbers on that, that would be good. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Cool. But um, so what should we say then about? Welcome, Jessica. Hi. Hi, I'm. All right. Glad to have you. Um, as far as the the option where, okay, you just maybe do the, the printer, should we add that to the, the formal announcement that, okay, for this this price, or like, pretty much, which would, we could make it like, um, I mean, for your location, at least, just the printer, like, literally like 500, 600 bucks for the whole event. And, um, that way we can get yeah, a much that, larger participation while still covering that's costs. Quite, yeah, that's quite a big difference that I think will really help. I mean, there's because the conversion rate to New Zealand dollars, there's quite a big difference. You know, mm. if we if you said you can drop it down to like five or six hundred for just the printer, that's about nine forty New Zealand dollars. So if we can offer that at one thousand New Zealand dollars, that's a big difference than like uh, I think it was going to be seventeen hundred New Zealand dollars. Yeah. Um, so I think that's that's. I think that will really help mm. um, and then maybe you could add on the raspberry pi as another option for those that are like actually no i'm really keen to build a, a phablet mm -hmm. then they, they can add that in the shopping cart if they wish to yeah and i think as long as there is you know one or two um, sets of the Pi hardware yeah. on site that everyone who has a printer is going to be able to contribute to that project because um, you know a lot of it is more about how we put it together and how we're going to integrate it all uh, and, and assemble it in the case and I think if they've got 3D printers I think that they'll be um, you know I think they'll find it still just as, as much learning as if they yeah. the hardware themselves. Mm. No, absolutely. Yeah. Well, for the Raspberry Pi, I mean, there it's really like there's a, you know, people can get, we're getting that off Amazon. I mean, it, you can't really get those in bulk unless you're buying like hundreds of them. So it's really easy that you, we have a very explicit list. Here's all the parts we are using and then other parts we print. So we can just make it available as, uh, don't even include it. I mean, people can get that readily as just as well as we can ship it to them by, you know, drop shipping or something like that. Um, but yeah, I'd say, um, why don't we offer for the New Zealand location, um, I don't know, like 575 US for without the, the Pi tablet? Or, or 550? Should we try something like that? Yeah, I'm the 570 four comes out to like 900 nz dollars currently uh -huh. so i think if I, if i if you're happy with me advertising oh you'll be the one advertising it but you know i'll tell people as well um 900 nz okay which, which comes to which with the current conversion rate is is 574 us okay yeah 899 nz Yeah. Cool. And so that would be. So D3D you get the printer with it. Printer. And then the Pi tablet you tag along. 
tag along for the pie tablet with other people who are going to have it. Yeah. And the pie tablet so is one day, the other three days rely heavily on a printer and other small experiments. So, so we're good on that. Yeah. What would the, if the, if it's 574 for the printer, what would you do the tablet edition? Well, I mean, the, the realistic cost there is like 200 uh, US when you get just, just the parts. But mm -hmm. why don't we put up a, basically here's the shopping basket if you would like to get that or, or we can say, cause, cause I mean that I, I end up drop shipping. So just talking about logistical, logistical simplicity if people want to, I mean, they're, they're signing up for the whole course. Um, but that price ticket, they're responsible for the Pi tablet. They, they can tag along. And here's a price list if you want to, here's a shopping cart if you'd like to purchase it. Something like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, I think that would be good so we don't have to worry because uh, that's also another cost to, to organize that and ship that. Uh, that's overhead there. So we can let people do that if they want to uh, save, save money on attending the workshop. Let's try. Yeah. Let's try that. See if sounds see if we get people signing up on that. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah. What about for now? If we if we do something like that, if there's definitely uh, issues on a cost, which which of course there are. Uh, what should we do, guys, for the Jessica and Jeremy? What for, for the U.S. like regarding just the the Pi tablet without the Pi tablet option, just just the printer essentially, and then you can hang around for the other days. Now already we have I, the. See, we have already the the weekend option, so that was for two days. Maybe we could just does say, the weekend option include the Pi tablet hardware? Um, what did I say there? No, because that's the first two days, and we weren't getting to the Pi tablet on the first two okay. days. So we already, well, if we look at the announcement already, we have the printer only, but that's we're calling that a a weekend option. Um, and we're charging 799 for that. So US one or two days you get the printer. So that's that's there already. And we can since if the people show up and it's like it doesn't cost us more to have a few more people, I mean, we should just possibly reship that say hey, you can actually do the whole workshop on that without a Pi tablet, but that kind of seem, seems a little weird though, because then that's almost like not fair for the people who are paying the full registration <clears throat> at a at a larger price. So it's it's a little tricky to, mm. to in terms of how you present it, just in mm. in a marketing. Uh, that's why I put 799 for the U.S. option there, assuming that you know people can afford it. Uh, just just for the weekend, which which for somebody who has time, not the time, but maybe just more money than time, so and they can afford the weekend, but you know they're cutting into their work or whatever, that kind of makes sense. But I, I would say like for you know working with the high school with Ian there, that it kind of makes more sense there to advertise the the lower cost option option. Um, yeah, it's, it's the conversion rate really that. Um that makes it hard, but um, yeah. yeah. I agree. I think the way you have it set now, saying there's a weekend price, and then just, you know, by if they end up wanting to stay for, or come for the next couple of days, then that's fine, but they don't have the Pi hardware. Maybe they can choose to add it on, you know, that the same kind of idea, but I agree also that maybe, you know, if there's more high school age, you wouldn't, it would need to have different options, but I imagine it's more of a group participation thing. So you have a more, you know, there's a larger group that it will definitely be participating. So that's where you maybe adjust it for more of a group high school rate or something. I can imagine groups in, in Boston that, that could be applicable to, and, but I haven't had that feedback at this point yet. Um, it's gone through, I've, I've really put it out to people uh, at RISD, my the colleague there that put it out to a bunch of RISD students. Hmm. They definitely should be able to afford the, whatever prices we're saying. And then um, another colleague through Wentworth uh, Technological University, I don't know if he's posted, posted it yet, but um, that should be fine. And then the, through the BAC, the Boston Architectural College, I think they maybe would have an, op I hope they will have an option where they actually support 
students or faculty participating, but mm -hmm. they haven't uh, responded about that yet. So there may be more kind of individual case negotiations, but I don't think we have to change the way it's listed on the web, on the advertisement. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll leave that. Um, except for the New Zealand where we would say, uh, let's see, but how would we add that just to the New Zealand location? It's something that, do you have means to... Put it in New Zealand dollars. Just sit, just don't sit, say the American <laughs> dollars, just show, just say New Zealand dollar price. Yeah, I mean, if someone wants to look it up, then they'll be like, oh, it's cheaper there. And they can figure it out. I mean, they can fly to New Zealand to participate if they want. Yeah, yeah. I'd be up for that. Good call. Uh, good call. Uh, okay, so uh, that's a good deal. Put up the New Zealand, uh, New Zealand option in New Zealand dollars. Yeah. Yep. Okay. That sounds good. Um, uh, what about, are there people who, because as I said, you want to get people to work and take the printer home, but if people don't do that, is that worthwhile to have people signing up just to participate? Um, if like I, I'd like to definitely ask people to participate if they can do documentation like video work stuff like that mm -hmm. um, so I guess yep, I mean if, if you I've never um, been to the camp so I'm not too sure what it what it looks like but um, you know I would really like it if it was all right with you if you know I had extra students there that are sort of yeah uh, documenting the day and things like that yeah um, absolutely. And, no, do you mind if like visitors come and no sort no of just... it's we, we we can have them let's see if we can uh, come up with a with a documentation plan so just maybe maybe talk about getting a good shot list of what we want to capture like one thing i i definitely wanted to to get is feedback from students like okay well how is this experience take them aside and do a little video short videos sh short little thing for testimonials mm -hmm. and stuff like that mm -hmm. uh yeah. can we do something like that yeah that yeah yeah that'll be easy yeah yeah so video yeah feel free like um get people people to participate as well i mean some people will get the printers some people will pay for it and others if they're documenters don't mind don't mind having them uh there's a lot of like just setting up a bunch of and even like kind of like maintaining <clears throat> a bunch of different angles of the same thing or time lapses like mm -hmm. i don't know if you can uh, do you teach video class too? Do you teach video production too? Yep, yep. You think yep. you can invite some of those students and give them an assignment to do a little cut of this particular part or, you know, just edit this one section on this topic, you know, and divvy it out to a lot of students so no one is overwhelmed? Yeah, yeah, we can do something, eh? We can, we can all have something set up. Okay. What kind of equipment do you have? Do you have, do they have, what do they use? Would you just use your your equipment, or do they also have some equipment? Um, no, the school's got some. Um, we've got uh, like a DSLR camera, a, a Panasonic Lumix G eighty five, which is quite a nice four K camera. Um, I've got some tripods and things like that. I've got some Go. I've got a GoPro, and I know someone else has got a GoPro. So the GoPros will be really easy for the time lapse stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, no, nah, we'll, we'll, we'll be sweet. We'll have it covered. Yeah. Yeah, so some testimonials. And then, like... I have a GoPro. I have a Co GoPro also. I like, I mean, I like the idea, too, of, of the idea that visitors, they can come if they post to X, Y, and Z social media or something, but having a response, so they say they're interested in checking it out, if we have a response, oh sure, you can come. You get, you can do this X Y Z or whatever. But I like the idea of having a particular role that they can play. Um, but even Ian, like you're saying, if you the, the GoPro, I can set up the same sort of scenario. Um, and it'd be, I think it'd be if we have kind of uniform documentation too. That would be really useful and and a strong message. Mm. What are yeah, yeah? What are Jessica? What are some ideas of how we coordinate that? So first of all, there's the curriculum itself, and then maybe um, 
I mean, if we could take like the equivalent, you know, kind of describe it. Okay, here's for example, we're building the Arduino. So make sure you capture these steps and stuff like that, and we can give it as an assignment for each each thing. So the student is also learning a little bit about the process as they do the video, but they're also actually capturing something that makes sense that we've kind of prepared the workflow for a little bit so that we have uniform coverage from different locations we can say and then we can use that saying okay well this is how it looks yeah just it for example if we miss something from one location the other location could fill in and stuff like that but mm -hmm. getting a lot of footage is, is good so we have Absolutely. stuff to choose from yeah Okay. I think the idea too of, of some questions, like you can come check this out and then if you would just answer these couple questions for feedback. I mean, because really part of what this is doing is trying to just spread the word and make people more aware of the whole movement. So mm -hmm. anything that we can have people do, like, yes, you can step your foot in the door if you promise to post to, you know, Facebook and blah, 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 and blah, 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 or something, you know, just make it easy for them as well. Like, so you have different levels. You have someone that maybe comes as a video documenter, someone who comes just to check it out and then says, yes, I'll post to social media and, and, and answer a couple questions or something. Just, you know, but have a couple ways that people can engage and that we're able to, when people come to us with the interest but not ready to spend the money or the time, mm -hmm. we can still have a specific way they can pay. Yeah, because I mean, if they're not paying, they're not taking the, the machines home, but to have more people helping out is, is perfectly fine. Yeah, I like that. So maybe just specify a few things and then maybe post that on our social media, like, hey, if you want to come, you don't have the funds to do it you can help out these various roles yeah yeah so let's I think let's, it's because that way it's also more inclusive it's yeah. more a lot in line with the whole message yeah yeah it is mm -hmm. yep on a video there's time lapses there's testimonials and this detailed build procedures like we can uh based on how many people we have we can say okay if like for example Ian you say like would your students be there like all four days or like one day or how would you see it happening um, if it was okay with you I was I was thinking that I'd have um, two students with me mm -hmm. and they'd be with me for the full four days working on the on the projects um, so two students with me if if our school does get a second registration then I hope ideally two students with them um, and then on yeah. the side of them, I'll probably have about a team of maybe four or five students um, running around with cameras and, and, and shooting the thing. Now, the other students would be there like for a day or all the time or? I'd, I'd try and get them there for the whole time. Um, yeah, there might be some sports and things on the weekends, but I'll just try and rotate those kids so at least there's you know enough students there to be able to do the jobs that that we have for them yep. yeah <laughs> yeah and that way we can plan out okay here's the steps you know you got say four people or six people up to you're saying six people documenting yeah we can say okay here's just yeah. cat, capture these so we can can um, allocate tasks uh, do you know who those yeah. people are right now so you can send me a list and we, uh, we can just start allocating tasks no i do not not okay. not yet Okay. Yeah, it's something that I'll probably work with with a group of students, probably starting now and sort of got three weeks to sort of prepare for it. Um, our students probably aren't that skilled that they can just do it at the drop of a hat. They sort of just need a bit of, um, we're just sort of building these skills at the moment. Yeah, okay. Um, what was I thinking? Oh yeah, Jessica, With in terms of the, the GoPro time lapses, I think that would be a cool idea if we were both doing it. Um, and Jeremy as well, if you, if possible. Um, my thoughts were that um, we'd just sort of set the GoPro up, clamp it to something that has quite a good view of the, the work areas where there's quite a lot of building action happening. And then I'd probably um, change that angle um, every on each day just to sort of mix it up. So, you know, day one would be from sort of a high angle and then day two sort of you know just sort of change the perspective and so there's mm -hmm. just a bit more footage to work with rather than the same spot all the time it's just a bit repetitive yeah 
it would be cool to have also so like one wide shot but maybe one like select one printer that we're kind of like tied on it so you can see the whole thing come together yeah. in a sm much smaller area that'll be good yeah cool yeah, cool. that, that makes sense with the GoPro. I, I totally get it with the GoPro. And the GoPro is wide. So it may be yeah. a different camera for the focus for the shot like you're talking about, Marcia. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And as far as, for example, Ian, if you have four other students, do they have that's all gear from the school or would they just have, use their cell phones and things? Uh, no, we'd get them doing gear from the school. Mm -hmm. Uh. I've got some gear as well. And then maybe, maybe the phones, like maybe um, a Facebook Live here and there might be quite cool. We could, I'll, I'll, I'll sort of leave it to them to sort of come up with, brainstorm some ideas and let them kind of get creative. Yeah, uh, I like Facebook Live if we've got, so if we're there, <clears throat> yeah, let's let's jump on it and, and, you know, get on it every so often to mm. promulgate the word here. <laughs> yeah. And we should have the like, so, yeah. So that's one idea. But also like the the video chat on on this, whether we use this this thing, this how do we call this the WebRTC, the the OSC call the OSC conference call. We should have that running the whole time, and you know us checking in the whole time. Quite good. So, yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah. So when 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 you're conferencing with the four other locations are you sort of talking to the cameras and things or is it just basically like fly on the wall they're just observing what's happening we have coordinated like, meetings like oh yeah we would want to check in like every morning and afternoon but then other time you could pop in and out uh, but we had a really bad internet in the texas location last time so we we couldn't do it the whole time but now that's not a limit and uh yeah. jeremy is there any limits for where you are where you're going to be we don't know yet but it shouldn't be a limit either i know those yeah we shouldn't have any bandwidth issues yeah. i expect to be able to do if we want to do live video conference the whole time um, i'm hopeful that that's definitely an option yeah okay so as far as our next steps right now where we are yes, so what, sir. sorry go ahead jessica i'm just agreeing it should be fine in boston too it shouldn't be a problem yeah, we should have 100 percent connectivity. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's good. Um, uh, just to background a little bit. What I'm doing, I'm looking at, uh, you know, one thing we're finding out yet yeah, is like one is a bad number in business. So like one one is like if we only have the nine day steam camp or even the four day, there should be a lot of different options, different price points, and which we don't have. Other things that we can go for, which I've been actually looking at more is other types of programs like say you got you know events that are local that are spread over multiple weekends or just events yeah. where but primarily where we have captive audiences because i think one thing we're finding out is it's diff marketing is difficult um so so getting ins to people that we know like for example there's a kansas city stem alliance or or math teachers association i've got a friend there for example who who's making some introductions but I think that's that's kind of how it will work, where we get more of the captive audiences route, where we develop our markets that we have people that can provide audiences on a regular basis. So that's kind of what I've been doing in the background, just trying to establish these kinds of connections uh, on the longer term. Because for the longer term, you can plan better. And then for the like perfect example would be the September 1st kickoff for the, the challenge on the cordless drill, which is the big deal for this year. Uh, so we've got Mitch, Mitch Altman collaborating on that. We're going to post that, like start posting that like mid-March. So we have many months to prepare and like a ton of places to line up. So that's kind of riding the, the fame or publicity of others that we're working with or other captive audiences. Like Mitch has got a lot of captive audience in the, in the hackerspace community because he's one of the seminal, seminal leaders in that, in that world. So uh, that kind of approach is is something that probably like OSC should be working to establish with a, with our public mission. You know, we have a little bit of entrance way into that kind of world of, of getting people interested more for the the social vision and all of that. So I do see OSC emerging as, I mean, a standards and marketing organization for this kind of work that, that we can absorb people and then we actually uh, can have uh, people signing up. So that's kind of, kind of the way I'm approaching it right now. Mm yeah um that sounds great i think that's per i mean 
I think that is absolutely applicable to the kind of audiences I'll find in around Boston as well. So that's super exciting to hear. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And and yeah, it's really about like, you know, if we're connected like Jessica, you know, you might have some university friends or Ian, your friends at other schools, really p thinking about it for the longer term. Like that's why I started this, this conversation. Well, what's the, like, Ian, what would be the ideal thing like in a long-term relationship that could come out of this? You know, so so maybe let's ask you that. What would be the ideal thing that you can? Yeah, I, I think I watched one of your uh, live stream videos, and you were talking about you know how you know a kid could set up a build the three D printer and then replicate that, replicate that, set up a micro factory, and now they've got some you know levels of production that they can then you know make profit from. Like so, I think that really appeals to me, empowering sort of our students and our communities to sort of be able to have those skills to do that. So like I, I kind of see our school, you know, after the STEAM camp starting to go down that pathway. So setting up, you know, mini printers and then sort of finding some, some means of uh, some product that we can produce for other people. Mm. And then from that sort of sharing that model and replicating that model at, in other communities around parts of new zealand yeah um just just the whole sort of mindset of ose where you're sort of taking back that in the independence of production uh yeah that that really appeals to me so yeah so yeah the vision would be to you know take it from sort of just a tool that, that prints things that nobody uses to something that can be very useful and then filling that up to, yeah. to, to be a real thing and then and sharing that and other people being able to, to, to have the same thing set up. I think that sounds, that would be really cool. Yeah, and it's about the continuity of, of uh, collaboration. Like, you know, you got to put some effort into that and continue that to make it happen. Um, yeah. Do you think, um, regarding the summer, do you think you can send any students over to our program? Because that's, I mean, that's like a three months real deep immersion. What are your thoughts on that? Any possibilities of how we can strategize on that to send people like either yourself or somebody else, because I mean that's where you're gonna get that up to like the big machines and and up to construction mm -hmm. for, along all the open yeah. source techniques. Um, I've thought about it. I think that's something that I'd be really interested in attending myself. Um, I think on a school level, uh, just at, at, in our current state, I think that's probably like a step too far like i don't think we we don't really have workshop facilities um we don't really have any engineering staff like that can do welding and things you know i'd love to be able to myself um to teach the students um but yeah i just think for students at a school level i think that the summer x camp is probably uh not as relevant mm -hmm. um but for myself and and i'm sure um other adults um, that really appeals to me i'd love to attend one day um just not yeah. too sure yeah if, i definitely don't think the school would um <laughs> want me to go <laughs> right what about anything from the the community development more on the like the national level or the, the Maori, Maori community and all that oh, Are there totally. any yeah, initiatives totally. there that that go get into like local production and stuff like that they would have they would love it. They would absolutely love it. So I could sort of see this as the, the micro factory thing. Um, you know, I can kind of see after this one, after, you know, if I become an instructor and then I can run um, future camps myself, that I'd absolutely be um, tapping into those, um, yeah. into those stakeholders. Um, and they, I, they would yeah. definitely be interested in something like that. Yeah. Yep. So let's see how, how this one goes. That would be good. Just a few weeks away. Yep. Yep. Cool. What are some of the next steps we can do right now? So just maybe wrap it up at that. Um, um, for me, it would be just getting those those shopping carts sussed, like you know, getting those price points. So when I start telling people, uh, you know, you can come for a thousand dollars and you get the full full days, or you know, if it's it's a, if it's nine hundred or whatever, whatever those things are, and then also. Um, throw if we can put in the accommodation and food options in there as well just so that I can also say that that is available um, to them to go on and book that 
I think that's going to help with our numbers uh, personally. You know, if people okay. are traveling from around New Zealand to come to Palmy, the fact that the accommodation is all sorted, I think that will make life a bit easier for them. Do you have some numbers on that right now you can pass on? Uh, yep. Okay. Why don't you do that after? Or uh, Yeah, yeah. yeah I'll send you an email. So after this yep. meeting, I can... Um, so add the accommodation and food option to New Zealand event. So... So I'll do the... I was hoping... Yep. Go to ahead. get um, confirmation on the upcoming dates for the um, the classes in April and maybe the early June classes, just so that if people are interested as we go through the marketing here in the next couple of weeks and the timing is too short, that okay. we're pretty firm on when the next two classes are going to be. Okay. Mm. June dates confirmation. Yeah. Okay. I'll take that. Take a look at that. I know June I had. A, a, I see we have a, like a June one to June nine class, and I had a high school that's... very interested in something like June six to June ten. I think uh -huh. that was about the date. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to get, as I'm going to start reaching out and marketing with people, um, make sure I know kind of that we're pretty firm on the upcoming dates. But let's let's talk just for a second about it because there's the there's the Steam Camp calendar. So let's paste that into the schedule page so i'm gonna paste that but let's go through that so take a look at the link um i can tell you the june 1 through the 9th so june 1 is the start of the summer of extreme design build and basically the first first days is everyone needs to get trained in this collaborative literacy so we might as well run a, a steam camp format event mm. but now with with a focus on uh i put it's actually not updated for topic wise but i think the the highest priority yeah so there's some I, I need to update that the highest priority for the start of the summer x is that we get reliable printing at the larger scale so that means getting access to 3d printing filament that we make from scrap or either regrind or stuff that we grind ourselves so the first camp i would like to make that where we're working on naturally the first four days of the normal curriculum uh, up to I would say the Raspberry Pi tablet because we're, we want to use that for documentation every single student in the program is able to document th their stuff well so by that time make sure that capacity is fully nailed out to to use the actual tablet for d practical documentation mm -hmm. not as an experimental thing but as a practical device and then so then the five project days what what to do large printer grinder filament maker that's yeah. that's what makes most sense there because throughout the whole summer we want to have access to printing large things in plastic so up to the very end where we're printing like plastic lumber and and like crazy large gear downs that are plastic for even for some pretty heavy uh, kinds of machine applications so that's that's just critical i want to get that so that we enable the evolution to the actual print uh, building materials field so large large volume stuff so uh grinder filament maker yes we got to get that like as early in the program in the summer as possible and just keep iterating on it so that's that'll be the steam camp it's an experimental five days and hopefully we have i mean we've built the working uh, grinders and and filament makers we just want to scale them up now so it's it's a lot about scaling for just uh at the end of the summer we want to be producing filament reliably so continue that we, we may have a group of people and it depends on how many r people register but a, a group that's like continuously developing the the filament making infrastructure throughout the whole summer uh, because that's so central to a lot of the other other activity that explains the june one through nine so if you guys if you want the six that's it'll be a little different i mean is it any possible to do to have them do june one or that's not school season yet i think they're in class until the fourth i see the yeah 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 so and they wanted to go i think it was a weekend in there and then they were hoping maybe you know maybe something could happen right as the first week that kids are out so that you know if kids want to stay around before summer starts yeah they can get involved yeah but i mean i think well i mean it's that's a, so i guess that would probably be the eighth so we would probably if we want to do that we would probably be starting kind of you know at the tail end of what you guys are doing but i is still Jeremy think talking you know, much and i can only hear you yeah 
hold on, let me maybe refresh here. Sorry, Ian, Ian, you said, can you hear me now? I can hear you, I can't hear Jeremy. Oh. Maybe I need, maybe I need to refresh. Hang on. Yeah, Jeremy. Um, can you hear me? I can hear you, yeah. All right. Um, well, I mean, if, so we're going to be going full force How on this. How about now? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Cool. <laughs> We're gonna be going full force on the summer X, so yeah, we gotta get start the program mm -hmm. on the first because that's that's the yeah. official first start date. But if you guys want to do something like yeah, I mean do do another. If you if you've got a good audience at that time and there's good interest, yeah, by all means. Um, but you know, just in general. So the we're June starting... one, June one through nine is very firm date. Then um, how about the one at the end of April? Um, yeah, April twenty uh, twenty four. There, right. Yeah. That is waiting for confirmation from because actually Hong Kong, which was supposed to be March, we're pushing that to April, and I'm waiting to hear on the 24th as the date there, um, okay. which should be. That's what they kind of said. Where if we can coordinate for the first day starting at the same time, that would be good. Uh, do, do you have any specifics that where you'd like to? Do you have any people interested in a particular date in April? For, for no, I just wanted to make sure that I could get that that information out as mm -hmm. I interact now with people on the marketing. If they're if March is too soon, then be able to give them the next two dates. Yeah, um, I would just like to mention um, if the April twenty fourth date, if that could go the week earlier, mm -hmm. April seventeenth, then that's in our New Zealand school holidays. Um, which would really make it uh, quite easy for me to go to the school market, like go and attract students to come as sort of like a holiday program. Yeah, yeah I think that actually might be really close to when there's a, in our area, there's a week long break about that time of year as well. Usually. Yeah, so that the, 20, the 24th of April is like the last day of the holidays. So if we could just bring that forward one week to the 17th that would give us um one two three four five six seven eight nine. yeah they could do the full nine days yeah yeah um only thing so so those are up in the air right now the only firm one is june one through nine which would be happening here in kansas city area and then also June twenty second. That's that's pretty firm. So maybe like I should black out, black in the firm one. So June one through nine, absolutely. Um, June twenty second. Yes, that's the San Diego school, which we talked about that already. It's that's coming out in like a week for the announcement actually, where they're publishing on on their website. Um, and July one is for the summer. We were basically doing the first of every month is because we're going to expect to have because the program is either one month chunks or like two or three months so at the beginning of every month we have to onboard every new 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 team where we would do a four day on july 1st and four day on august 1st something like that and then a huge one in september 2nd yeah like september 2nd and 10 yeah like put that on a calendar as major that's going to be major major stuff happening there um you know, ideally we've got in the dozens of events, so that's that's going to be big. But yeah, the April is kind of up in the air. But maybe we can also say for April, well, we've got these. Since the Hong Kong thing is is kind of weird, that's really different time zone. Maybe we should just say, okay, well, let's plan for April 17, which is about two months from now. And just said that okay, let's commit to that for another event. That's uh, what do you guys think? And then the question is like four day or or longer, or like I mean, exploring the route of okay. Austin is actually online the twenty fourth, April twenty fourth is the beginning of the spring break in in Boston. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, it, it just completely depends. It's that's why we we kind of. 
the more people we have, we kind of just basically pick, okay, here's the dates that are the best for all of us. Now it's kind of uh, a little hard at this point as we're starting out. Um, I, yeah, I'm, I'm just more, I, let's, let's commit to one of the dates, you know, sooner rather than later so that as people inquire, we can say, here's when it is, you know, here's the, you know, you can, there's the weekend option, there's the however many days the total class is going to be, either four or nine. Yeah. Um, people can start planning on it then yeah. now. Um, no, it's true. So maybe like because the the Hong Kong thing is so so up in the air, especially you know, with the disease and all that. Like maybe just declare us the seventeenth if you guys think that's that's a good deal. Um, yeah, I mean the seventeenth works for us, but it might not work for Boston. Boston sounds like twenty fourth is right. <laughs> You might end up though losing people because they're leaving for vacation. So I, I I'm fine with you know whatever works best for most. One question about Hong Kong, Marchin, is yeah. that supposed to be the Mars thing? We use like a space thing. Yeah, is that group space focusing camp. on that? So, yeah. So the, for the project days, that definitely doesn't because work. Because I out. might be able to help actually with that because I mentioned we have some contacts that are like you know the guy who's the CEO of Virgin Galactic is my is a friend. Your buddy. So yeah, uh, they might be. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> my my husband grew up with them, but I'm really close with them still. Yeah. So, and that might yeah, yeah. be an option. Actually, we, we should talk about that. As I mean, it might be a way for me to reach out with something solid mm -hmm. to ask for their support. <laughs> we need Branson's money. <laughs> <laughs> no, yes, I'll take put a note there. Note that Jessica has a friend at Virgin Galactic. All right, guys, I've got to run shortly, so I'll stay on here for as long as I can, but I'm going to uh, yeah. turn to the... Uh, um, what's, the, what's the verdict then? Cause since I'm, I'm kind of like, yeah, I wouldn't count around the, because of the time sticking. Maybe maybe sleep on it and maybe like come back tomorrow and let's see, okay, what do we say for the date of the next one? I mean, Jeremy, you're, you're kind of... I, I think I agree with Jessica. I think it's I think the actual date is probably less important than just getting the date picked. Um, I think right. one week or the other. I think there might be some schools out around here. There might not be. Um, you know, there's some various schedules that happen in each district in our area. So, but maybe as like well as just university. Yeah. yeah. Maybe just I mean, keep keep at a date. You know, keep what it says on a on a wiki there without editing and just, just say okay we're declaring the next one april 24 which i mean the rationale there that was a essentially a month and a week after the the last one so we have enough time to post that based on the learnings from the march 14 through 17. um so but maybe let's just let's just say that april 24. Yeah. Have, have a quick about april 17. um i just we April seventeen we could do April twenty four we I don't think we could, hmm. but that that's okay you know it's not a big deal if we we don't um, go in April well, doesn't you know it's not a big deal yeah yep cool okay that's close to May and then Ju well June one is the only thing we can say absolutely right now but don't have a firm conclusion on April 24 well, let's think about it yep okay um, anything else otherwise like yeah I mean spread the word I'll, I'll get the event up as far as the um, shopping cart the price point I'll just I'll write that down and put it into the, the announcement so you can just start spreading it mm. so if we did just um, just said that it was an NZ dollars so yep. that would be 1099 nz dollars would that cover the full camp no it would not take eh? because that would only be five seven be around 580 or something like that eh? yeah no i mean it doesn't that hardly covers costs couldn't really yep. do that i mean yeah so but, it, it might have to be step like it might have to be a separate thing eh? well do the thing where no, just do the thing where you're signing up just for the materials on a, on a printer, and then you can still, yep. so just like yep. what we said. So let's yep. introduce that. Yep. So you're paying for the 899, was it NZ? Yep. yep. No, cool. And they, they would do that in the 
and they, and they could still be there for the four days but they yeah, just yeah. wouldn't be cool yeah no, if perfect. they want to get the if they get so inspired about the tablet they want to get their own they can that that will be a separate yeah. thing yeah yeah okay so let me cool. write that down on a, an announcement just change the announcement for that right to you so we're on the same page and yeah let's start spreading the word yeah just uh get the word out yep. there yeah we'll, we we'll do and i'm going to send you an email about the um accommodation and yes, food prices send, that send it listening. to me so we can add yep. that mm -hmm. with the price yep. points there yep perfect and that, if that would would you want them to pay that in us dollars through osc or would you sort of say accommodation available contact ian or how do you want I, to do I'd that i'd say what's the easiest Sorry, sorry about oh, it. Oh, there what, he is. What's the what's the easiest way to do that? Um, so assuming there's registration <gasps> there, that I think probably like. I mean, what would you suggest? I mean, it seems that if they're gonna pay, then then they can add that to the admission if they want to add that, the whole package. Yeah, I think that would be fine. I just wonder, would it be, um, would it be you know difficult sort of you you then have to transfer that money to the university who has the hostel or i could if we just sort of did the accommodation and things separate then you know they could contact us and we could get them to just do a direct bank transfer to the to the to the university um i'm i'm fine either way if you want to have a think about the the logistics of it um i'm not doesn't phase me either well, it way. depends depends how they if they can take would they require payment beforehand or can people pay after that happens um they would require payment beforehand but not like immediately like okay. the, i think when when we cut off the bookings yes that would probably put it around there yeah. yeah yeah no i think let's just i mean i can i can easily do a wire across to them cool. and just yeah. have people do that once because otherwise i mean if every person like are you saying why like do you guys have any kind of a means of registration that you you use currently or because if we have the event zilla thing then they could just go all through there yeah no 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 we don't really so i think that'll be yeah. fine okay let's just do um, that yeah so then does it get advertised in us dollars um well no we'll it's say it's so the way it's going to work is we advertise no so for the new zealand it's new zealand dollars but like upon Upon registration, it will. Uh, let's see. Do, does it give them options for currency? Let me see what it says. What it does for currency. If we go to our announcement. I think you can. It, it'll probably it. switch, but they'll be able to figure that out. Now, now you're dealing with the person about to pay. pay. They'll be fine with it switching currency. Well, I think it's just. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think it takes care of that automatically because when you pay, like if you're a paying from New Zealand, yeah. I mean, naturally, I think so too. It's, it takes care of it. So we'll advertise in New Zealand uh, dollars so people understand the New Zealand price for that, that market. Yeah, yeah, I think that comes out in a the wash there. Okay, cool. Yeah. Excellent. Awesome. Okay. All right. Thanks, team. So thanks, guys, and we'll be in touch. Yep. Okay. Cool. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.